Mm. All right, say hey, good evening. The Madekwa Maneru, Boa Noite to everybody who managed to join us tonight. Uh, it's another session, another episode, of course, of uh, live chats on Monday. And uh, this is our second season, as you would know. And of course, we only do it for 30 minutes so that you can always go and have your supper afterwards and have a nice catch up with the soapies, one of which potentially could be written by our guest tonight. Ms. Nontalamunisi, how are you, man? Good, thanks. How are you, man? Life is good. Thank you very much. And thank you for, for gracing us with your presence today. I know you are a very busy woman and uh, things are really uh, hectic on your side. And for those, of course, who are thinking, who is this woman uh, called Nontalamunisi? She is an author of eight books. My God eight books. Uh, she has done a great deal, of course, to get that going. Besides that, of course, she's a scriptwriter very recently uh, for Nobile, show that's running on uh, Zanzi Magic. She's written for Gomorrah. She's written for Isibaya. Hey, she's hung out with the biggest of the big leagues uh, in terms of the entertainment industry, so she knows everything that there is to know. She's also been a content producer, Metro FM, Josie FM, and now she's a commissioning editor at Multi-Choice Africa, responsible for the East and Southern channels. Ma'am, you have had quite the journey to get to where you are today. Thank you so much. It has been, it has been a journey indeed. And uh, we, we must, of course, congratulate you on the new post uh, that you've been appointed in. We know, of course, it comes with a lot of money and nice cars, potentially. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Uh, what does it mean? Just in, in, in short, what is this Eastern and Southern channels? Is it Zambezi Magic? Or what, what are these channels at all? Yes, it's actually Zambezi Magic. So that would be one, Zimbabwe. That would be Lesotho, Zambia, Namibia, um, Swaziland, and Malawi. Have I counted seven? Botswana, Botswana, yeah. So it's seven countries. Um, mostly um, our thing is based in Zambia, though. Right. So, so most of and you, of course, know that I've got a number of viewers in Zambia and in Zimbabwe. Hey, guys, if you're listening, the gates are open. Singenile, singenile, tapinda, tapinda. <laughs> We have a person in the building who is going to put out programs on TV. And of course, I'm trying to think now, uh, does this have anything to do with the viewership side on SA or are you strictly obviously going to be concentrating on those seven that you just mentioned now? No, I'm focusing on my people. I'm focusing on my people. SA, mm, be nice for them to watch, of course, be nice. We need those um, numbers, um, especially because the shows are available on Catch Up as well as on Showmax. So, yeah, it'd be lovely to have them watch. And I think in this long, winded journey of yours that has found you now uh, at the pinnacle almost, uh, I'm thinking you are almost at that show on the rhyme level now. You've got the power, you know, to, to, to commission what programs get on air and not. But I'm thinking you've had a long trip, like I said, to get to where you are now. Is there something yeah. that you would say potentially over the years, this has been the highlight of my career thus far? Out uh, of, the, of the recent appointment. Um, you mean like the other posts that have been appointed to compared to this? Well, probably not the posts, but uh, the events or, the, you know, stuff that has happened uh, right yeah. up until you're getting this, or maybe meeting somebody. Or, I mean, you know all the stuff, you know? Donald, so you must be specific. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I know, but I can now we must tell the viewers. I want, yeah. I want to lose non <laughs> so I, th I think be, be, before, obviously, you're hitting this high that you have now. Yeah, what yeah. previous high would you say was the highest high until now? Hmm. Previous highest high, you have never said and thought of that. Um, but of course, I think one, a high on its own was me leaving um, commerce faculty um, to switch careers and industries to join um, the media space. So I think that on its own. And then, of course, I paid the dues. Um, you know, when you come into a space and you're doing something that which you had not studied before, you constantly second guess your voice. Am I you know, in the right place? Am I doing the right, you know, you, you always second guess yourself. 
you know, but once again, these things will teach you that sometimes even our qualifications and the things that we should study for, you know, they don't really qualify us to be in the positions that we end up being on yeah you know so so maybe i mean one of the things that i really enjoyed was being a tv producer at ogilvy where i was doing commercials um for kfc dstv um we had four main accounts so that's kfc dstv uh, mondelez the one near my chocolates um and uh the bigger one what was it kfc yes kfc you know, so so I think for me that was like wow, just to sit in a room where you are discussing how the cheese is going to sit like you know in a bag. It's 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 like wow, I can you know this is what people do for a living. You know, it 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 will always be interesting and you know yeah. So so I think that was one of the moments when I felt to myself, hmm, not bad at all, not bad at all. Yeah, to begin with. Hey, Jamona Lab, that 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 cheese reference right there. And mm. puts you in trouble with a lot of our viewers because now when we go to these outlets and we buy the burger, it doesn't look like the one you advertised to. Us. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, right? It's true. It's, Is it's, there it's, an it's, element I mean, of false advertising there? <laughs> no, but at the end of the day, it's a mind game. You know, I always say that even with stories. So the other day I posted on Facebook a picture of, I'm not sure if you've seen it, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a video clip of um, a guy who's hitting a tire and every time he hits a tire, you know, there's spills of blood all over, all over his face, you know, and people are like, oh my goodness. So you see someone who's literally doing this to show that this is the, you know, where the blood is actually coming from, you know, no one is being killed. And people are like, how are you playing with us like this? You know, and for me, those things fascinate me because they, 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 they show us that, you know, everything is, is imaginary, you know, you just create, whatever that which you can create out there it's crazy but it's it, it is what it is it's how it, it it's how it's done you know if you've seen people create a wind there's you know the video clips you know the pages that i follow where people are creating a wind on set you know and you're thinking it's so cold it's so cold like mm -mm. so yeah it's, it's 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 so it's yeah it's a mind game at the end of the day i think before we, we, we extend on the creative side of life uh mm -hmm. just going back to that jumping off of the corporate plane as it were which i think you did pretty much without wearing a parachute how did that come about what really said in your head why it's again manje saying it right on corporate creative i think of, of, for, for most people who literally have a job you know paying a bill uh mortgage a car payment you think of all these things man before you oh. jump ship and for you to jump without the parachute, like I'm saying, knowing that you're going into an industry that's so difficult to crack in as well. What, mm. what, what about? I don't even think I knew the industry was this difficult, really, uh, to think me. <laughs> Probably I would have stayed at the bank. <laughs> no, you know what? In all honesty, what happened was, and I remember, um, I was on an eight, um, it was day eight, um, out of 21, I was on a prayer and fasting um, thing. When we concluded the prayer and fasting, I remember those days I would play one song by Yolanda Adams, you know, prepare my mind, prepare my heart, whatever comes, I'm going to be ready. And when I went in and I submitted my resignation, I remember I had been given a two-year contract that which I needed to sign to say that I'm going to stay at a bank and be a credit analyst for two more years. And I thought to myself, I don't see myself doing this, you know, yeah, numbers, yeah, my math is not bad, but I was like, I don't see myself doing this for two years. So what then happened was I really ended up, you know, just taking a leap of faith without anything to fall back on, as you say, um, you know, and I really didn't know where I was going to end up, you know, so I went in and I was like, okay, it's time to go. I just knew it in my heart that it's time to go, you know, and I remember one woman, Mami Von Khami, she was at the SABC at that time. She asked me, what would you do even if you're not getting paid for it? And for me, that was like, mm, storytelling. I could tell you a story until the next day, you know, so talking and writing, you know, you and I can sit like this, dot, dot, right? Um, and it was like that thing that which you can do, even if you're not getting paid, that's what you need to be doing. That's where your, your energies and your focus need to be. And I did that. And I, and, 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 and I say, did not just come shoot you know it came at a price it came at a cost you know where you have to start afresh um you know 
um, I remember Star Rocket Soweto TV telling people, hey, I'm co-producing, I'm co-producing, but what then people are like, we don't even see your name on credits, you know, and I would have never thought credits mattered, you know, that much until I found myself having to sit after a show, you know, to be like, hey, don't change the channel, don't change the channel, you know, waiting for the credits, you know, and as the credits are rolling and, you know, your name is sometimes, it's not there, some days it's there and you're excited, you know, and it, it, it came with some fulfillment and that's where the writing and the credit became a big deal for me, you know, that I can write something for you, might, you'd rather not pay me, but credit my, 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 my work, in a way. So, um, so yeah, and I can tell a story, Ronald, you know this, but, but yeah, that's, that's, that's ultimately how the journey began, just to say that much as I did leave without anything to fall back on, I did not know what awaited me, um, you know. And now, 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 now you find yourself, of course, uh, in an industry that's very much in the, in the throes of transformation. And I say this because, you know, traditional TV, which we signed up for back then, is no longer the same. Scheduled programming is not the same. Yeah. Now we've got these video on demand streamers who are really attacking at the core of what traditional yeah. TV looked like. And with that, of course, there are content creators coming from every little corner. People on YouTube are posting movies and doing documentaries. People are doing it on Twitter. People are doing it. Yeah. You know, it's no longer a regulated and there's no one place where you have to go to present your story, which just opens up the doors for that. Now, how has, has the industry, from your perspective, changed and transformed to catch up with the times and ensure that uh, your current employers, for example, and your previous employers, for example, remain profitable with so much competition content uh, happening around them? Mm. Wow. It's, 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 it's a very interesting question because I had to, for instance, ask myself when I was going through interviews to join MultiChoice to say, you know, we had SABC, how did you know, Zanzi came in like that and just, you know, dominated the game, if we were to say so, you know, because um, that's what that, that's what happened, you know, when Isibaya came in and, you know, whether you, 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 you know, you, you just had to find yourself there, you know. So I think the target market um, is, 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 yes, it definitely does play a huge role because you need to know who your target market is. And one of the things that I learned writing was that Twitter is not always your target market, you know, because many a times you, you hear some people say things on Twitter to say, oh, is it via this? Oh, is... And you'd find that most of those people, one, they don't even watch the show. They just caught whatever, you know, snippets and they ended up just saying whatever that they want to say, you know, so you, you, you need to know that your audience, you know, it's those people sometimes who don't even have Twitter, those are the people that you, whom you're speaking to. And as we always say that in writing, your friends are not your audience. I mean, if you were to ask how many of your friends have read your book, you'd be very surprised, but how many strangers have read your book? You know, so many times we just confuse those things. So I'd say that and, and, and this is why even in writing and in pitch sessions, because I see it a lot now in pitch sessions where people are coming in to pitch a show, you know, it's quite important to make sure that you have that hook, that which will allow people to say, what will make me sit another five minutes here? Because the options are so much, you know, the options are just so, so much. You know, I'm actually reminded, I think we're trying to convince you at some point to watch Money Heist or something like that. But you, 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 you think about all those things to say that what would get someone to that, to that space? Because you really could be watching other things. So you invest, and I, and I was laughing, I was, I was laughing the other day saying to myself that I haven't watched TV for the entire week since I came back. I was, I was, I was, I was out of province and I came back, I was like, I haven't watched TV the entire week since I came back home. You know, it's like we work in television, but we, we hardly even have time for TV sometimes because we have deadlines, we have to watch certain things, we have to approve certain things. You know, it's, it, it's, it's just moving, it's just moving. So you want to make sure that you, you create a show that will make someone say, I cannot go to bed without watching that. You know what I mean? In a world where people have so many options, because unfortunately times are different. It's no longer back then where we all knew that you only have days of our lives, you only have bold, you only have... Uh, generations and all the now it's 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 really a crazy spot you know we everyone is fighting for the same for the for the same time slot and i think uh, bringing that issue of uh, 
a, a captive audience in mind and the understanding of course that you have your target market and you want yeah. to reach it in a certain way and obviously that admission as well that you're adding there to say you know people in 1985 are no longer the same as people in 2005 and 2025 the thinking is different and a joke that would have been very funny for example on umzinez and caesar maybe about a woman or something in today's age could be found to be uh, with a lot of red flags in terms of the women's emancipation movement so how are you now when you're writing your stories and being creative and thinking of all these storylines trying to keep up with an increasingly mm. discerning viewer increasingly mm. analytical viewer and yet still try to present stories as much as real as possible how, how do you maintain that balance mm. now when you're doing script writing so i think one um and i've said this in the past that most of the shows that which we reference that have done so well is because they, are based, they were based on a true story. So what would make us watch Prison Break, you know, what would make us watch, um, you know, Scandal, um, um, and um, what's that thing? Um, redemption, Redemption, the Shawshank Redemption. You know, what would, what, what, what would captivate us is the fact that you could tell that these stories are just based on a true story. So when we move away from the relatability part of a story to tactics, it shows on screen. And this is why, um, I mean, um, you know, when, 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 when we get content now, you have to analyze it to a point where you have to be able to spot um, gaps to say that these people have not done their research. You know, where you say like, you know, this is not a, a simple thing as, you know, maybe a doctor is, um, you know, um, examining a client that what is, you can't just say that then they take out their torch you know, you have to, you know, it's a people's touch, you know, so you have to also be educated in the spaces that which your stories would, would, would be focusing on. It's like Grey's Anatomy. You can never write Grey's Anatomy without going deep and knowing medicine in depth. You know what I mean? So a lot of these things rely so much on research because people would watch these shows because they relate to them. And what would make them relate is when we do our research. I don't know how many friends um, doctor friends I've had to hustle, you know, hey, Nele, hey, Dumel, you know, just to ensure that, you know, I am, you know, I'm approving something that which this is how it would happen. If someone was in a coma, this is what would happen. If someone were to go blind, this is what would happen, you know, things like that. So, 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 so research is very important because we cannot undermine our audience. They know more than we know, in fact, and they, they are very much exposed. They are very much exposed. That's why it's easier for them to quickly see that, oh, this is that show. Okay, move on. They're gone. And, and I think now I'm thinking of obviously as, as you create like that and try to stay true as real as possible, you know, but at the same time, uh, put an element of escapism, you know, to ensure that people actually are transported to a different world and, and, and experience a different perspective of how life should be. How do you then get the balance between getting that part right and at the same time, you know, knowing that you need advertisers advertising revenue to keep your show afloat, you know, to get a second season signed, to get your pilot project off the ground, ETC. How do you get that right? You know, do you have to like kill a Malina and bring it back? Uh, and, you know, all those crazy antiques and yet yeah. still try to be real. Like how do you get the balance and ensure that people actually tune in and watch your show? And I think this is why, so every story would obviously, what we do is we break them into three. We'd have an A story, we'd have a B story and a C story. So normally an A story is your biggest story, you know, that which you are following at that time, um, particularly even if with your big leads, um, you know, B story is secondary and then you'd have your C story. Now your C story is not, would mostly do your comic, your, your comic um, relief. So for instance, Aspire, mostly Scullin would always be your C story. The Queen, mostly um, Tim Sima, who plays Petronella, would always be your C story. So you want to try and infuse that, um, you know, comic relief in a way, just to, you know, just to balance so that you are not too serious, but at the same time, you are not just jokes and jokes and, you know, it's brutus all the way, brutus all, you know, you have to make sure that you balance your, 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 your thing, your scenes. So it, it, it is important that even when you put together these characters, you know, be it you are telling a comedy, whatever genre, you know, you want to make sure that you can find pieces of each and everything that which you need to make a story work. And this is why you have, you'll have Tyler Perry speak about um, the fact that, you know, he would tell these stories that which, you know, he grew up, you know, 
seeing from you know the parents and you know all these mamas and all that and it's like how do i bring comedy whilst you are telling the real thing how do i make sure that people are laughing but at the same time they're catching these truths you know so you use that as a bait to just you know catch people in and once you have them you know that's when you now begin to reveal the real things and um particularly for people who want to be in screenwriting there's a book called save the cat you know what happens in save the cat is they're trying to teach you that with every movie for instance that which you've seen your hero be it jason statham is trying to save a child who's been kidnapped or they're trying to save um you know the world from a nuclear whatever you know bomb threat or whatever thing you know there's always something someone that is saving and you break them down into saying then every story needs an inciting incident and an inciting incident is when you come in and you say someone you know it's like on there's this movie queen latifah's um, i think it's the holiday where she's told that you know she's got six months to leave you know you've got cancer you've got six months to leave whatever and then you you know that's the inciting incident when you are told your brother has been kidnapped and you need to go back to the life of crime just to rescue the brother that's the inciting incident so every story needs that inciting incident to say what's the catalyst and once you have that you then break it down to say how do you move from that to the next so you always have to have the debate mode where in even at home we ask ourselves oh my goodness is he gonna go back is, is he gonna go rob a bank because you know the wife needs you know, their medical bills paid or whatever, you know, is he going to do this or not? So that debate, whatever thing. So storytelling also has its own mathematics, you know, because after debate, then you move to a completely new thing, you know, the setup, you know, to say, what is it that needs to happen? You know, somewhere, somehow, there you also need to have fun and games where we forget that we're in a movie, be it they're in Miami, they're getting drunk, this and that, you know, it's fun and games all the way up until you get to your Tower of Terror, you know, um, you know, or all is lost. All is lost is when we really think that the hero is backed up in a corner and is not going to come. You know, if it's an action, you, re you really, they kill the person and then for some reason they, they wake up, you know. So it's all part of the mathematics to say that have we done our maths with this story? And I think that if with, we, if with, we, with all our stories, we were to do our mathematics when we we're telling stories, we'd get to we'd be in a position where we could really, you know, safely say that we've done our work. Because then there's no story that would go on air without going through that entire screening to say that, do we have this? Do we have the false witch? Do we have, you know, yeah, in a way. So it's now just with, a lot for me. With the, with the kind of budget that uh, Zanzi Magic has for its shows, you know, and the kind of production team, uh, the quality that was behind Isibaya, for example, what would you think went wrong? Because that show was literally the anchor, you know, that brought people flooding to Mzansi Magic to watch this captivating story about the taxi industry, something so real, something witnessed on a daily basis, you know. Where did they go wrong, you think, for the show to end up in the can as it has now? Um, so controversial, Ronald, you, you're going to hire me when I lose my job. So I think, um, I would say when you move away from the hook, so the hook for Isibaya, what would get people seated would be your taxi drivers, all these people, the world, that taxi world that which you speak about. The moment you move away from the hook, the moment the story stopped being about Nomzamo and um, I'm sorry, Tandega and um, Sbu, for instance, you know, that, the moment that was over. You know, you water down things, you water, you change your characters. Samson was now a good guy, you know, the one who was evil. You know, once you change characters, you know, all your villains are gone. Um, you only have one or two, you know, it's, 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 it then becomes, yeah, I don't know what's the word for it, but it's when you move away from the hook. The hook is what makes, if, if the hook of the story is that, you know, I'm here, I'm out for revenge because, you know, these people killed my dad and I'm here to revenge his dad. The moment we're no longer telling that story that this person is here to to revenge then it's a it's a it's, a, it's an issue particularly for long formats because they're very hard to sustain they're very very hard to 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 to, to sustain long formats you know drama series you can do things and get away with them but long formats and those are the most expensive to do and I, I'm thinking now, as you're saying, you know, in terms of uh, the scandalization of these questions, uh, and I'm thinking we've got from a stage where I think the most controversial 
TV program in South Africa, you know, that really opened the floodgates to, to, to creativity as we see today yeah. on the channels. I would say potentially was Izo Izo back in the day, you know, that really changed the genre of how TV should be made, how yeah. a production should look like, you know, what, what real aspects and elements should look like in a TV. And unfortunately, of course, criticism came because there was a lot of, uh, unfortunately, white people that were backing that show, writing that show, producing that show, you know, versus the black talent. So in essence, the white uh, people telling our black stories. Is that still a case in South Africa 25 years after uh, democracy has come? Yeah, you do have that. And by the way, the people who produced wrote Isibai, I mean, Yizo Yizo, are the same people who did Isibai. That's the same company. So, 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 yes, you definitely do have, um, 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 you know, white people in the forefront as far as, um, you know, the storytelling is concerned, but particularly in advertising, you know, um, productions, I think it's, it's, it's balanced, but particularly in advertising. So, um, because for instance, Skim Sam is, um, you know, the person who's at the forefront, there's a black woman, you know, so you have the queen, you have, um, the river, you know, we, you know, it's black, um, owned, so, uh, well, it's black and white actually, you know, so, 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 so there is a, there is a balance, I suppose, with time, but also what happens is when you, when you end up taking too much stories, um, and I'll make an example with Shonda Rhimes, for instance, we've seen Grey's Anatomy, we've seen Standal, we've seen The Catch, we've seen Private Practice. You are bound, and, and I think they said, T.D. Jake said this, that, you know, just make peace that there'll always be a ball on the ground. Your job when you're juggling so many balls is to make sure that it's not the same ball on the ground, right? But there will always be a ball on the ground. So when you look at Grey's Anatomy, for instance, the show that launched Shonda Rhimes, to where it is now. You'd see that mm, at some point then you got distracted because there was how to get away with murder that you had to babysit. There was, you know, the catch, there was private practice, there was, the, you, you just became, you know, and then ultimately Scandal, which was your biggest show yet as well, suffered in a way. And this is just my 2% opinion where I feel that the show um, suffered a bit in a way. So maybe instead of us giving shows to one production you want to make sure that you open up the industry to a point that you allow a whole lot of creativity yes let's have form yes let's have black brain yes let's have chesa yes let's have seriti yes let's have you know what i mean so you want to make sure that you 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 yeah you open the industry <laughs> Do you believe, though, that at least, uh, the, I, I understand, of course, the economics of it and that the money potentially is still a lot uh, in the pockets of the white people, sorry to go racial, but it's just the fact of life, as it were, uh, that they end up telling our stories on our behalf because as normality. It's true. It's true. I mean, if you think of your Shaga Zulu, you think of your long walk. Um, you know, your Mandela thingy, you think of it as, um, you know, so it is true that, yes, they do end up having to tell our stories because of the finances and what they can do with our stories as opposed to, you know, our world. But we, 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 we know we're getting there. I mean, if you've seen the river, I haven't seen the episode, but I know they, 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 they shot, you know, the blue train, you know, where you see real things, you know, and it's exciting stuff, you know, what made blue, what, sorry, what's that work? blood and water thing to trend was because people were just fascinated by mostly the shots you know seeing how that thing was so well shot you know so yeah look at legacy which is you know done by Chedza it's also so well shot so we we've come a long way definitely we've come a long way and yeah there is still room of course I must agree with you there. I think uh, the quality, of course, has changed over time. You know, we can see, you know, this is the, the sets are looking a bit more different. The acting is, is up notch. And it's, it's where I want to touch on now, this acting issue, where you as a creative behind the scene, you've written a certain character in mind. You know, you've got a certain outcome of how the character should look like on the screen. And of course, the casting happens and somebody mumishes the thing. You know, at, at what point do you even have a say, perhaps in terms of casting? You know, you had a Cheryl de Villiers in mind, but then we have some sister now struggling to bring out the, the dramatics and the theatrics that you had seen when you were writing the story. What option or what, what recourse do you have as a writer to say, I got about it. This is not what I had in mind initially, you know, when, when I wrote the story. 
<laughs> no, as a writer, your powers can be limited unless you are not just only a writer, but maybe a producer or executive producer of a show, um, like an Ayanda Buroto, for instance, on Mobile. You know, there you've got a bigger voice in a way. Otherwise, as a writer or a storyliner, mm, no, it's none of your business, really. And this is why you are never even on set most of the time. And that's why you, they have casting director. You know, and that's why in your writing, you have to be so clear that the casting director has to understand the audition when they are, you know, when they are running auditions for um, the cast to say, this is the person that we are looking to bring. And many a times that these days when people pitch shows is what they do is they bring in mirror characters. You know, so someone will say, this is so-and-so from Scandal. You know, we'll say, think of Mklambe, Jack Mabaso. If someone says Jack Mabaso generations, you already know what they're looking for. You know, if someone says, you know, without them necessarily saying that we want to, you know, portray the exact same character, but it's just a mirror character to say that this is the type of a thing. So it, 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 this is why it's important. We always say this even with scripts, that when you write your script, you need to know that not only are you going to read the script, you know, the, 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 the production assistant is going to read the script, you know, there's so many people, it's going to pass in so many hands, the, the makeup artist, the person, the, the, the set um, design, so that all these things, you know, can enhance the script that we should've written. Because if I wrote a Makib Kib, Ronald, you, someone has to go and find the Makib Kib to make my scene come alive. So that's why you have to be as clear as possible in a way in your writing. And if, if I want someone to sing, I have to write the song if I, if I can. I, normally, I would normally do that. You know, if it's, you know, it's a church, whatever thing, write it so that you make the work of the talent to be easier for them just to sit there and embrace the story. Right. Yeah. And uh, my final question for the evening. Yes, yes, yes. Time does fly that fast. Uh, you mentioned earlier a quote from T.D. Jakes. You touched on Tyler Perry as well and bringing the church issue right now as well. Now, you are a Christian. You are a born again Christian. And uh, I think just speaking in general in terms of the portrayal within the media, mainstream media, uh, it's not so kind to Christianity. You know, normally Christian characters that come out on TV shows are either slightly local or they are, you know, some, some, some potentially trying to steal people's money you know, it's always funny like that. There isn't an authentic, if I can say, representation of Christian dome. And I think you and your friends are to blame. What's happening there? <laughs> I think, um, yeah, definitely because, I mean, I remember on Isiba, I would enjoy writing May Lillian's um, thingy. It's, 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 I think, trying to avoid sounding preachy because sometimes you find that there are limitations that you don't want to come across, you know, as someone who is um, putting this on people because some people, the moment you say certain things, they switch off immediately. So you want to make sure that you can still bring this um, evangelism or whatever it is that you're trying to bring without really losing your audience. And it's a very tricky, tricky, tricky one to do. But then I agree with you, and maybe it is something that we need to start looking at, not to make our people crazy. I mean, if you look at, I think it's the Kendall Brothers movies, you know, the ones who have written um, um, Fireproof, My Marriage, they've written Facing the Giants, I'm an Over... Um, you know, so, so you look at those kind of movies and say, if people can tell movies like that and, you know, impact, and they can impact us till to, you know, what's stopping us from doing the same? You know what I mean? There are no gimmicks on fireproof my marriage, but it's, yeah, right? So it's just really daring to say that whatever audience that I'm going to lose, so be it, you know, and, and just know that your niche market, focus on that and make them happy and that's it. And we'll get there because we do want to tell those um, 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 Christian stories. And yes, we do tell jokes. I mean, I remember I did a play um, on, on, on the story with the woman with the issue of blood, you know, and I did a play with, um, you know, the Joseph um, thingy, Joseph's um, action and all that. And I, and I said that the brothers saw Joseph and then they sat down and ate hot wings, you know. And so you just want to try and infuse that um, um, comedy, you know, in serious stories, because it was a serious moment to say, this is what we've just done, you know. So yeah, so you just want to try and get people's attention. And sometimes, yes, we do maybe um, push too hard on the gimmicks. Understandable, understandable. And I suppose, of course, uh, most of the creatives anyway, aren't really 
uh, you know, Christian, if we can call it like that. And hence, of course, I think it's going to be difficult to push that agenda. But I think besides the agenda, just generally having a representative character, you know, Mfundisi, who really looks like Mfundisi on the street and not the scandalized version, I think would be an appreciated thing uh, coming soon. But now that, of course, you're sitting in the hot seat in the big seat, we are looking forward, yes, uh, to better representativity. And uh, we are trusting, of course, that things will be a bit more different going forward. Ms. Nachanta, thank you very much for gracing our show. Uh, it was a quick 30 minutes, as you know, time really ran fast. Sure, I had so many more questions, but I don't have time because people have to rush and watch uh, some of the sophies that you've written out there. Uh, any last word you want to give to people that are watching tonight? <laughs> well, I think it's just to really thank them and hopefully there were some aspiring writers out there because we need those voices, you know, we need those voices. There are so many stories that we haven't had, you know, that which we still need to tell and be interesting one day to really hear them. I mean, if you, if you, if you know how Scandal was formed, Shonda Rhimes went into that restaurant thinking that she's going to spend 20 minutes with this lady because Judy Smith has said, you have to hear her out. The, a, a, a meeting that was supposed to last for 20 minutes went on for three hours because that's how good she was. And guess what? That's how she got a show. So you, 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 you should always be, you know, keeping that open mind to say that you never know where your story is going to come from. No, thank you very much. Uh, it was really a pleasure and an honor to have you uh, today. We know, of course, in your busy schedule uh, that, you know, your time is of the essence, really. So I think we appreciate it. And uh, thank you. Thank you from my side for, for, for rocking us, for rocking to, um, up tonight. Thank you, Ronald. And thank you for having me. Right, and for everybody else who's watching out there, thank you very much for tuning in, uh, of course, to another exciting episode of uh, Live Chats on Monday. We're back again next week, Monday. Uh, we've got an exciting show for you. We've got the former CEO of Bloomfontein Celtic, who's going to be talking about the sale of Bloom Celtic and, of course, how that has changed dramatically the scene of soccer. But, yeah, look forward to that. Meanwhile, good night. Dima Debwana. We'll see you soon. Cheers, cheers.